just where I am. Where are you? Not you. I was talking to them. We're back working on this. The never ending nut. The never ending nut. Today, we're going to fix it, Ed Gunn. We got a better appreciation for that never ending story movie. I got appreciation for Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah, that too. So, for those of you that don't know what we're doing, and you must be living under a stone if you do, the cast iron nut for the Cincinnati Shaper is right here. Somewhere. You see it? It's right there. This one is being rebuilt by Don. Right there. Don found out that the cast iron nut that moves the table left and right was destroyed. If you look inside, you can see that the threads are just tore all to pieces. It's cast iron. We attribute it to poor oiling because this is where it gets its oil and it's a hit or miss thing. So we need to make a new one. So, a piece of Durabar to make this nut was about $90. Clark over at Windy Hill could have made it, but about the same price. And then we're back where we started, a cast iron nut. But I'd have a nut. You, you shut up over there. Hey, you, shut up. <laughs> so we decided to make it out of bronze that's made for nuts. So we bought a hunk of bronze. I programmed my CNC mill to make this shape to match this with some refinements I made it a little thicker and put four flats on it so you could put it in a four jaw, jaw. this one is rounded over the top hard to hold you dang near would have to bolt it to something to hold it and I couldn't sleeve this one so it's too thin so this one's thick enough to where I could sleeve it if I screwed up, and sure enough we did. The story for that's up here somewhere. So I got to thinking about it when we screwed up that first piece. Don bought another piece and had it coming, and I was laying there at night thinking, and I thought, you know, it's thick enough we could sleeve it. So I bought a piece of hollow bar bronze, attempted that, that's up here somewhere. And an insert failure, and so now we're on to the second one. People have been asking me a few questions. Get that in there. It fits really tight. The first one, I put little rings on the outside so you could put an external snap ring. We're going to Loctite it in with 640 Loctite and then I was going to drill a couple holes and put a set screw into the bottom. Well, the next piece of material, somebody says, there's no snap ring grooves. Those are sort of like belts and suspenders anyway. You know, if it was pulling out, it was going to turn on the inside. So I eliminated them on this one. What I'm going to do, is I'm going to come down right here at this intersection and we're going to drill and tap a 5 16 by 18 hole and we're going to put a set screw in there. Could put a regular screw in there, cap head if we wanted to, but set screw would be fine. We're going to do the same thing over this way. That will keep this cylinder from rotating and it will also keep it from coming out the ends. So that with the Loctite, it ain't going anywhere. So now we're to this part. Now the reason that it failed in the last and I couldn't save it was this little cylinder rotated in the chuck 
and I didn't catch it. So when I got everything lined back up, I in essence started making a three start thread instead of a two start. In an effort to stop that from happening, I'm going to mill three flats on here at 120 degrees so it would fit in the uh, three jaw chuck on the axleson and alleviate twisting if something happens. At least I'll know where to go back to. So Don's got his little Chinese indexer. And we're going to hook it up and get it going to where that's what I said, you can't pull hard enough. You well, listen to me. I don't listen to you, Don. You know that. You listen to me. Is this a Chinese one? Does, it go, does it go 360 degrees or is it metric 361? I'll take my toy and go lock it up if you don't like it. You would, wouldn't you? I don't know. We're just going to do it this way. That should lock it. It's zero. This has got a little crappy uh, set screw. It doesn't hold it good. But, uh, Take it out. Put your socket head set screw yeah, in. Yeah, I need to put it over there. And I can't believe they didn't give you more jaws than this. Did they give you a wrench? 169 bucks. What do you think? I know, but did they give you a wrench? For the chuck, chuck wrench? I don't know, maybe. Maybe. Good. These blue lights you have over here makes me look like an albino. Bitch, bitch, man, you always bitching, man. Just be happy, you know? Just, hey, thank God I'm alive. I woke up today. Everything's good. I gotta go to Don's. Hey. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't just pull too hard on that. I won't pull hard on it. So now you're going after a chuck wrench? I'm going to look. I'm going to look. Well, that's what I want. Kind of look like those, Jordan, though. They'll be backwards. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay. Should be marked one, two, and three. There's three, two, and one. Quit turning the lights off. Well, we didn't mark the outside, it looks like, so I just have to figure out which one's which. That looks to be like number one. Or three, one. That's three. Three. Two. Two. That looks good. So now we're going to put a little flat on it. See how close that is. Come on. It's either really a good one, or I'm not touching that piece of metal. Let's try it there. Wow, how's that for being a good set of jaws? I'm shocked. All right, 
So we're going to set this at zero. Okay. Twenty hundred twenty is two forty. Three sixty the next one. I had Alexa here. I could confirm that. Back to zero. Two forty, which is twenty four in Chinese. Well, how do you want to sell it and get another one? I never said I wanted to sell it. You said I wanted to sell it. You, you said you wanted to sell it and get one no. that didn't have belts. I just said I wish I had one that didn't have belts. I gotta, I gotta take all this apart and clean it. It's just gummed up with everything. Take it out of here. Where's the old one? On the bench over there all apart. So you've destroyed another... Uh, that worked pretty nice. Yeah, and it's little, much smaller. You just you just put the whole dang box in there. Yeah, I put the whole box inside the box. That's it. See the little contact on the side that had to add? The little auxiliary right here. This little... Didn't come with clear it? Clear unit. No, they didn't tell you on the dang description, too. It doesn't have any auxiliary contact. Well... You made it work. Made it work. Let's clean these jaws off. Get a chip brush. I've got chip brush everywhere. You're hiding them all. What'd you do with the last one? Here's one right here. I got it. I got it. I got a box of them. Try not. Thunderstorm coming. My house has got five and a half inches of rain this month. Had two and a half yesterday. Itching something the day before. Well, I got four and a half in the last two days. See, that's why we put those flats on there so to line up with that and keep it from slipping out is easy. I've been thinking again. That's dangerous. I know it is. It usually costs me money. But, you know, a couple of videos ago, I went to uh, 
San, Angelo, San Antonio and purchased a set of uh, four foot pieces of railroad rail track rail I guess you call it and I want to make some gooseneck brake dies for my four foot hydraulic press I was wondering how that steel on those uh, railroad ties hardens. I think it's just the rail that's hardened. Well, I know the top of it gets work hardened, but I don't know if they do any process to harden it first. I don't know. But I was thinking I need to learn how to do that before I screw up. All right. Got it to within a thou. I'm happy with that. Another thing that I keep having to tell people over and over in the comments is this is a multi start thread. This lathe, because of the threads per inch and the gearing, will not do multi start threads using the thread dial. It don't work. I even tried it because I was hard headed and didn't think it would either. All lathes are not the same. Some lathes can do it, some can't. I had a heavy tin south bend that I made hundreds of telescope focusers, multi start internal thread using the thread guy. Worked fine. This one, you can't do it. So we're left with different methods. One method is to go down on the end of the gears and mark where the gear is and then change it around and start that way. That's a bunch of hard stuff to do every time. This method, it's a tried and true method, you set the compound to 90 degrees, not 29 degrees as you normally would for a V-thread. Because the profile of the Hackney thread is different than a V thread. When you put it to 29 degrees and use this to feed in your depth every time, you're actually only shaving the left hand side of the 90 degree bit. You're shaving into it every time. That won't work using the Acme. So I have to plunge into it. So you set this at 90 degrees and you use the, the saddle to go into your depth. To make the 90, uh, the multiple start thread, I then have to move this compound down. And in this case, because it's a two threads per inch, I need to move it down 0 0.250 of an inch to make the other thread start at 180 degrees. So that's what I'm doing. It will not work off the thread dial on this machine. I wish it would, but it doesn't. This isn't that hard. I'm going down a lot depth of thread, over 200 thousandths. So I go about halfway, set on one, then move it over, and then I start fiddling with it going in and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until that lead screw, which is sitting right here, is going to fit. Now, Don didn't want to take the screw off of all of this because it was kind of complicated inside, so we didn't do it. So I used the jib crane that we have built for this one, suspended it so that I can sit there and swing that multi-start thread over here to the nut as I'm cutting and check it using the, the, the correct worn thread. If I just go off numbers, that thread could be, A, it could be a bastard size, you know, this was built a long time ago and things back then weren't always exactly the same like they are today. So I'm sure it was probably hand fit. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm hand fitting it to that 
Any questions? I'm taking care of the problem of Don bothering me while I'm trying to do tedious machine work. I got him sitting over there playing with his cat. This doesn't work, I got a, another plan. I'm locking this. You could use this, but it's not as accurate as using this. Now this one's got a nice dial for going depth-wise, and it's more than accurate enough. You could put something over there, but you gotta rig stuff up. I find this is really, really nice. Okay. This was the culprit of not being able to make it work right last time. This insert broke. As you can see, this is a left-handed threading bar. It's carbide. It's got a half inch diameter here so that I can go into that small hole. You got to be able to back out with this insert of the thread completely. So you know you got to have at least this wide. This is the largest bar I could get to go in there. If you notice it sticks out kind of far that's because that's a three inch bronze nut. So I have to do a multi-start thread three inch bronze nut and what happened last time is this thread this insert came off. I backed off the screw. So now I'm going to set this up. You finished yet? I'm finished. Looks like I might have to go to plan two. But you'll find out. What's the matter with plan one? Didn't work. What was plan You came one? back in. Ah. Your any seats. I find it, but I know I have to get it. Just need a tiny bit of it. You sell insurance, sell insurance or something on your back. And you get your back all the time on there. There's just nobody to make comment about it. That's right. Yeah. It's good to be the king. Of the video editing. Okay. I didn't do this last time. I don't work with inserts a lot. I most of my machines run high-speed steel very nicely, and it's a very cost-effective way. I just don't use a lot of expensive inserts. That's because Steve breaks them. See, that's a good point. He broke the first one. After how many plunges? And yeah, he made what? We made like four nuts? Yeah. So... Isn't that bad when you think about it? You know, the, the screw was loose on this and I tightened it up, then we had problems. So I was thinking, you know... Loctite. I don't keep that screw from coming no. out. Yeah, forever. The people that I respect said Loctite isn't a good idea. Hey, if you can't get that screw out of there, which you probably can pretty easy, but it's more important to grease the screw or use Loctite on it that would act as a lubricant an so that it goes in and, or yeah, not Loctite, anti seat so that you get the correct amount of torque holding that bolt in, or nut in, screw in, one of them things in. Yeah, that's an expensive bar. I wouldn't want to be heating it up to get loose, Loctite loose on it. Uh, you could drill it out. These screws are not hardened, so. No. It's an expensive. Well, I could drill it out. It's an expensive. You, you would box. have it. I don't know what you would have. Anyway, 
of checking everything before we even start. We've tightened that up tight, cleaned the pocket, everything on the threads looked great. Watch, we, watch your depth too, because that shoulder was hitting last time. The fatter yeah, shoulder. Yeah. Now, we, now we're going to make sure that the depth of the screw is correct. Thing goes in without hitting. Okay, clear there, clear there. Nothing hits. Indicator's okay. We're actually right here. Yeah, that doesn't look really great. That's not, it's just one big thunderstorm, no one set pass would be okay. Well, I'm not worried about the thunderstorm. I'm worried about the electrical supply. Because hmm. if I start threading this and we get into a power blip, this thing turns off. Yeah, I usually don't get very much of that. All it takes is one. Ask me how I know. Well, everything is mechanical, it just ought to roll slow. So don't want to freaking chance it. It shouldn't change the position here. Not one to chance it. It would. That's why I don't really like my CNC machine stuff in these situations in my shop, which mm -hmm. doesn't have backup power supplies. So, I'm going to go do some work. And we'll be back to this in a minute. Mm -hmm. Just went through one heck of a rainstorm. Still lightning a little bit, but I'm going to chance it. I did a couple tests and the power goes off, it just all kind of wound down normally, so hopefully it won't screw something up. I've been waiting for two hours. Okay. I like this little thing as my little notepad. We are now over here. We're zeroed out. I'm going to touch off. And then we'll go from there.
two threads per inch. Make sure everything's the same. Yep, that's good. And that's good. Alright. I'm going in at five thousandths a time. I know it's not very much. I don't screw up. And I'm forcing that whole insert into that cutting, every part of that insert's cutting. So I don't want to take a whole bunch. So we'll just start off, go slow. Go from there. I didn't check this bar is still parallel. That looks good. Damn your gunshot. Dead damn material costs so much. You want to take all the precautions you can.
This is a trim tap heavy I like to use. And if you notice, I'm putting this here to act as a reminder not to put the thing in forward. So I leave it here. I know to go that way every time. Let's not knock it off. I don't know how many times I could say this, but I can't make a double start screw by using this thread gauge or thread dial. It's just not going to work. This machine won't do it. Not all machines can. Some can, some can't. Old South Bend I had did very good at that. And it made it a little bit easier, but this isn't hard. This isn't rocket science. You just have to do a few simple things. Set this to 90 degrees. We're going to move it 250 degrees this way. On my board right here, I have an X. I keep that X over here to tell me that I'm back this side of it. Now, when I move this over, I'll put another X here and mark that one out so I know which side I am. On this side, I'm stopped at 175 thousandths on this dial. I'm going to bring it up there and then we'll measure the size hole just to make sure we don't overshoot. So, this is on zero. I'll take the wrench and lock it. And we'll move it 50, 100. Hundred and fifty, two hundred, two fifty. I'm going to lock it back down. Now, two fifty on this dial. I'm going to mark this off. Put my X over here so I know I'm on this side. Now I've got to go back to zero, which is here. And that will start. So I'm going to go to five thousandths. And hopefully. <laughs> All right. Take a little break here. Let my hands relax. We're at 175 on one side of the thread. We're at 100 on the other. This is over here. This is my scoreboard. Now, I'll say it again. I can't make multi-start threads on this lathe because of the screw uh, threads per inch on it and the gearing. So I have to do it this way. Figure after about 30 more times, you guys will get it. Most of you get it. Just ones that don't watch the whole show. Anyway, a little thing that I've learned over the years is not, it's while I'm making a thread, is don't leave your hand on the half nut. Because if something happens, like you lose an insert or something like that, your first reaction is to pull it out of gear. And you do, you stop 
the advancement of the carriage along that thread path. And so when you pull this out here, you're now cutting a, a new thread all the way around the inside. So I don't ride with my hand on this. What I do do, most of the time if I'm worried, I put this in gear, then I put my hand up here. And all I have to do, if I see something going wrong or hear something, is push this down. And that will back the insert or the out of the thread and let it keep going, then I can shut the motion off. But if you do it the other way, it's even worse. So get out of the habit of keeping your hand on this. It's far better to put it over here. Well, as you can tell by the shirt, it's another day. I'm back at Don's. I think it would have been easier for me to just carry this lathe back to my shop. And I should do that next time. Although i got one just exactly like it <laughs> sitting there. Just got to finish it up. Anyway, according to my cheat sheet I have here, I'm this way 250 thousandths. I'm at 100 thousandths deep. And this side is at 175. So I need to bring them together and then we'll get a measurement on it. Don's somewhere else out of my hair and hopefully we'll finish this up in a few hours. Pardon the scruffiness. Plays are over so I can regrow my beard. Make the wife happy. <laughs> Now got both sides at 175. So both threads are equal now. And I'm gonna do a little cleanup. This trim tap heavy I use sticky, really sticky. And it holds on, and frankly, it's the best tapping fluid, cutting fluid I've ever used. Don took my air away. I'll be back. Personally, I don't like air around a machine tool. And the reason is well, way back in 1974 when I was going to high school and my so far oldest, longest, best friend was my high school machine shop teacher in Hayleaf, Texas. back from the phone call. I, I think I said before we were so rudely interrupted that I hate blowing machines off. And the reason is all these little pieces of metal get down here on the ways and, 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 and get caught up in the wipers and stuck in there and people never change the wipers out on your machines. So it's like running a Brillo pad over your ways. And that's why they lose seven, eight, ten, fifteen, twenty thousandths of material. So don't blow your ways off and change your wipers every couple years or more of you use it massively. Save yourself some trouble down the road. I was telling you about my, my high school shop teacher. It was my really good friend. During the summer he'd come work for me. He just died about five years ago.
but they didn't send the janitorial staff into the uh, the shops. The uh, teachers all had to come do that. And I remember seeing him with his air hose blowing off 20 machines every day. It's kind of didn't know any better at the time. Now I do. Don's back. <laughs> Caution. Now one of the advantages of doing a multi-start thread like this so I can actually measure the thread depth directly. Because here's one start, here's another start, and I can see that little ledge right there, and I can see where they start. neck would cram around a little farther. I could see what I was doing. One oh eight five. One inch and eighty five thousandths. That was to zero that and then measure the outside of this thread. says I'm about a hundred ten says I'm about ninety nine thousandths too small so that would be about fifty thousandths on each side onward in this position, we're down to 215. We're at 175 on this position, so it's time to move this and catch up that side over there. Make sure my indicator is zero right there. Unlock it. Count the revolution so you don't screw up. There's 50, 100, 50, 200. And 50. Lock it back down. That's all there is to move in the Crossfeed, or the not crossfeed, one of them mornings. We're on zero. Can you think of the compound? Crossfeed my ass. Get rid of my mark here. Because I'm at 215, I want to go to 215 here. So now we're going to mark that away, and now we're on this side again. Now we're at 275 or 175, so we want to go back to there and take a cut there. Make sure everything is still good. Remember I said I'd tell you why I keep my hand here? Because unlike probably 99.99% .99 of the people of the world, I have pulled people out of lathes. I don't 
want to get into this in no way, shape, or form. So I always have my hand up here because I'm usually leaning over to look. And I just know when I get as old as Don, I'm going to stumble yeah. and fall into this thing. It also gives me a good base reference point. I can move this without, you know, wiggling your body. This is a 6,500 pound lathe. My little puny arm sitting up here ain't going to hurt it, guys. Stay away from that. Okay. We moved the compound back over to 250 thousandths. I reset to my starting depth from this side. Now I want to go another 40 thousandths that way. 175, that's it. It's in, haven't changed anything. Started. Buy me some more of these. Oh, mine are dull. Mm. They're sharp and but they're so cheap. You said they just buy a pack of them. Mm -hmm. Just buy a pack of them. I like them. I'm packs. You want to try it? Is that what you doing? Well, I'm going to measure again. I think I'm about 20 thousandths off. This is the part. Don't want to mess it. Where you you put all this work into it, you certainly don't want to screw it up. And five thousandths too loose is not good. So Almost totally to depth. I moved this a while ago and I noticed that this holder did not put that center of that insert back on center. It was up a little high. So I reset that and retract the thread. And everything's been going great. But because I don't want to change that at all, because I'm down to the last few thousands, I'm going to back it away instead of taking the, the tool holder out. Now, these things, I get confused every once in a while of which zeros I've gone by. So what I do is I put a mark on zero with a magic marker, and then I count the revolutions. I know it's going to take seven to get it away. So one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven. I'll write it down so don't forget about it. This is at two ninety eight. It's far away. Let's see what we can do. out so use air. Not a big fan of air. Putting anything against past this nut. Hmm. I think it started a little bit there. Go down a little. Or move it around a little bit. I don't know whether it'll tell you go up or down. Mm -hmm. coming back. Turn it off. Don's been pretty damn good at leaving me alone. I'm trying. You, you try. That's hard too, boy. I know it is. And here's that motor go off. And here it comes running in. Doctors have been trying to help me for years, so it makes you think you can. What you can put your hands under it and cut it. That's what I was doing last every day. It's, it's down starting. a little bit. I think it's squared up there. It started. It started and went in an inch. Let's get it out. Well, Few three threads. quarters of an inch. Few threads, anyway. Using my tape measure as an inch. <laughs> okay. Let's go tweaking again. One, two, three.
went eight or went around eight half turns that time. Huh? Went around eight half turns that time. You just go tapered a little bit. Think this one worked on? No, no. Long three inch deep nuts with a half inch bar. I think it's tapering them a little bit. Well, they, they all do because the cutting forces yeah. push in. That's why you do a lot of spring passes. Cater. We don't use shit. Uh, no, I got a lot of masking tape. I got eight or two, buddy. Feel lucky. Yeah. No, she didn't run off that time. You just went sitting. Yeah, I figured it wouldn't take too long. Not to take it too long. It's screwing it up.
this stuff takes a lot of concentration. Screw up a little bit. I don't want to screw up now. All I want to do is take off about four, three thousandths. Oops. Seven times a day. Where's the end of your tape, Don? I don't know. I didn't put it on there. That would be perfect. No, it's, it's just weighing down too much on it here. Pick it up some. It's too low. Pick it up. No further. Yeah, I think we just need to do spring passes now. That's almost twice as much as we did before. We'll do spring passes. taking spring passes. When you're going into a three inch deep thread, cutting big acme threads, the tool pressure deflects the bar away. Even though that's a carbide bar, which is better, and a good insert for that material, it's still the pressure pushes away. Well, if you just keep dialing your dial in, to take more off here, your screw gets looser out here, but you're cutting a taper thread. So once you get the nose in of that screw, you know you've got it on the right uh, diameter. So work on refining the threads deeper into the hole. You know, that's a half inch carbide bar. It springs a lot. So all I've been doing for the last seven passes is leaving it set on the same setting and just taking a spring pass. And I am cutting material. Now I'm going to go and do the other side of the thread. We'll try it out. Mark it. 
there, so we'll get rid of that mark. Put an X over there, so I know which side I'm on. I'm going to go backwards. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. We get to lock it every time. Three oh eight. Don heard it turn off and come sneaking in here. You're gonna do the other side now. I'm just about ready. Don didn't like how it So close. Hmm? So close. Three quarters away. We have my enemies. Where'd the bar go? I don't know. That's what I'm looking for. Went that way, I think. 
Choose something to turn this, this shaft here. Mm -hmm. Get you something to turn that shaft. Cause I'm wiggling it and it's still going. So you doing that, but it was too late. You should have yelled. I couldn't get it out quick enough. You did it pretty quick. The good news is went all the way through. The nut is threaded all the way through. Yay. It's a little tight though. Well, we don't know how wore this is when we get down there. So what I would do is put it back in there. Put it back in there and mark it, it down there. Cause it moves the chain. No, yeah, it yeah. wasn't it. There's a tight spot right there and it comes loose. And it's close, but it's still a little tight probably. It's really close. Alright, take it out and see if you can do it by hand. I bet you can't. You don't need to. It'll wear. It'll wear. And it'll fit your bar. But there ain't no backlash in there. 
there's not a damn bit of backlash in there. Back it up and see. Let me feel that. A bunch of wimps over here. Oh, come on. My God. That's shit. Yeah, after I read it out. It's getting a little See. tight because this is coming back down again. Just put the bend on it. See, it wasn't a chain. Admit it. It's just the operator. Now see what it does. Which way was it? It's still got a little spot in it, right there. Let's take it out. Oh, come on, Don. Look at this. You couldn't do that before? That's my job, I, after I reamed it out by screwing it all in. My God, Don. Nine's working. That'll do. That'll be okay. You think this will be okay? I think it's probably better than it ever been in this life. Probably. There's no play in it. Boy, did you look out. I did. It was an expensive bar I broke. Yeah, it was. 200 and some bucks. Probably not worn there, that's why it's a little tight. No, it's tighter down here than it was here. Yeah, that's what I this mean. Is, it's not worn down oh. that way because it probably don't run that far down most of the time. Man, this should work, man. Shoot. Screws in, screws in. I still have some little crack in there, too. Forgot to back the bar out. Took a chip out of that right there. But I don't want it. It's the back in there. I think it'll work. work. What time is it? Four twenty. Been here all day long. Yep. Four twenty nine. Yeah. It's threaded. It's threaded. Hallelujah. Thank God. Only a thousand dollars later. It wasn't a thousand dollars. Lay hell. It's 360 plus the bar. No, it was, I bought two hunks of brass. That was 360. It was like and you Well. Bought I'm keeping your other hunk of brass. I'm still saying you bought a hunk of brass. But I can use it on the planer. And planer then, needs a new nut. Of course, you're going to have to buy me a new bar. <laughs> Damn, I hit that. I'm sorry, man. Hey, shit happens, you know. I'm wondering where it went. I'll probably have to wait till I move all of my stuff to find it. Put that on the lathe and face that up. Of course, you're never, ever, ever going to see it again. Period. Alright, the saga of this thing is nearly over, thank God. <clears throat> cylinders made, cylinders threaded. Really nice fit on that. That last pass was perfect. And just so now all we have to do is drill these two holes and thread them for the mount. Drill two holes in here. I'm going to put a five eighths or, or five sixteenths, three eight set screws down into there and hit one of those slats. 
And then people were asking me what happened to the grooves on this thing. Well, I didn't have enough material to finish the grooves. So. You're gonna make some little pocket like this. Well, we gotta do that oil pocket on it. That's easy. What I'm going to do to make this thing foolproof stay in is I'm going to drill the intersection of the nut in that sleeve and I'm going to tap it. And I'm going to put either a, a screw or a set screw into it. It's Loctite. Loctite. That'll be half in this, half in this, and it'll keep it from twisting. It will also be threaded so it will keep it from coming out. And we do one on the other side. 640, those other screws, if this ever breaks, oh, no. it's time to go see Jesus. Because <laughs> all hell's going to be breaking loose. All right. I'm going home. I'm tired. Bye, Pete. Tell them bye, Don. Bye. Where did the bar go? Uh, I'll have to clean. When I move all this to my garage, I'll find it. I saw it coming this way. Did it come into the spindle? I don't know. It might have. Hey! Is that where it is? That's where it is. I see it. Give me a rod. Something to stick in there. You do have a rod, don't you? Yeah. No bar. Is it long enough? Yeah. Well, no. I got it. It's got a long... Where's the, uh, the handle? The broom handle? Right behind you. Broom handle. That'll yeah, work. Do it here. You can't no, it won't. Well, it may work. You just got to hold it until it's hollow. Well, one way or more then. No, I won't. That that part right there, I can fix. Yeah, that's right down. Yeah, that's no, right that's down. the way it goes. Where's the flat part? On top right there. Right that's part. where it broke. The flat right part the flat right part. there at that spot. Mm. If you notice, I didn't even mess up the insert. Take that and fix that. You still recording? I guess it is. Mm. Bye again. Bye again. <laughs> All right, bye.